Hello everyone. Now let us discuss one of the most important topic of neuroanatomy, blood supply of brain. Now let us discuss about the circle of Willis. First we will discuss what is a blood supply of brain. It is formed by two arteries. First artery is internal carotid artery and basilar artery. So what is basilar artery? It is formed by a union of two vertebral arteries. So basilar artery is formed by the union of two vertebral arteries. What is a vertebral artery? Vertebral arteries are the branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. See, this is arch of aorta. Here, uh, the branch of arch of aorta is subclavian artery. Subclavian artery is first part of the It is divided into three parts. Subclavian artery. Okay. It is divided into three parts by scalenous anterior muscle. So, from part one, we get the vertebral artery. This is vertebral artery. See this. From part one of the subclavian artery. And we get internal thoracic artery and thyrocervical trunk from part 1 of the subclavian artery. Whereas from part 2, we get costo cervical trunk of subclavian artery. This is part 2. Costo cervical trunk. Internal thoracic artery is from part 1. Okay. So, what are the uh, arteries from the part 1 of the subclavian artery? Vertebral artery, internal thoracic artery, and thyrocervical trunk. Whereas costo cervical trunk is from the part 2. Part 3 of cervical artery is dorsal scapular artery. Okay. Now let us discuss about the vertebral artery which is the first part of the subclavian artery. Vertebral, vertebral artery is divided into four parts. So it is divided into four parts. The first part is present in the neck which is closely related, related to the stellate ganglia. So this is first part of this vertebral artery. It is present closely to the neck near the stellate ganglion. Whereas part 2, it enters through the cervical vertebra from C6. See, it leaves C6. It does not enter through C7. It enters through the C6 and it ascends up to C1 vertebra, cervical vertebra. Through, what is the component of cervical vertebra through which it enters? It is foramen transversum. It is foramen transversarium here. This is foramen transversarium of cervical vertebra on both the sides. So it enters from the C6 cervical vertebra leaving C7. C7, it does not enter up to C1. Okay, this is part 2 of the vertebral artery. Next. If there is any fracture to the cervical vertebra, it may cause laceration of the vertebral artery and can cause death. Okay. Next. Part 3. It is the content of the suboccipital triangle. So, part 3 of the vertebral artery is present in the suboccipital triangle. So, it has a groove in the... It is present in the posterior arch of the atlas. It has a groove. Third part of the vertebral artery has a groove, groove in the posterior arch. See this is posterior arch of the atlas. Here it has groove which is third part of the vertebral artery. This is the anterior arch. This is foramen transverse area of cervical vertebra. Okay. Part 4 of vertebral artery. It enters the cranial cavity through foramen magnum. As you all, as you all of us know foramen magnum. So it enters the cranial cavity through foramen magnum and it joins with the opposite side of the vertebral artery. See, from this side one vertebral artery comes, from this side one, both of them join and form the basilar artery. Okay. So, what have we discussed till now? Blood supply, blood supply of brain is formed by internal carotid artery and basilar artery. Basilar artery is formed by union of two vertebral arteries, uh, as we discussed, fourth part of the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery in turn is a branch of the first part of the subclavian artery. Okay, vertebral artery has four branches. First branch is present in the neck close to stellate ganglion. Second part, it enters through the C6 cervical vertebra, up, ascends up to C1 cervical vertebra. Whereas part 3 is present in suboccipital triangle. Okay. Part 4, it enters the cranial cavity through foramen magnum and now joins with the opposite side of the vertebral artery to form basilar artery. This is basilar artery. Okay. Look here, we find vertebral artery. First part is present in the neck. This is first part, vertebral artery. Here. Second part, it enters through the 6th cervical vertebra up to C1. This is second part. Third part is present in suboccipital triangle. It is the content of suboccipital triangle. Okay. Now let us discuss the branches of the vertebral artery and basilar artery. First, vertebral artery descends upwards and two sides of the vertebral artery enters through the foramen magnum and joins together to form this. These are two vertebral arteries. These join together to form this is basilar artery. Basilar artery ascends upwards and giving several branches and terminates in the midbrain to form posterior cerebral artery. This is posterior cerebral artery. 
So two vertebral arteries join together to form basilar artery. Basilar artery terminates in the midbrain to form posterior cerebral artery. Now let us discuss the important branches of different arteries. We see anterior spinal artery. It is derived from the two sides of the vertebral arteries. Two arteries are derived from two sides of vertebral artery joined together to form single trunk. This is known as anterior spinal artery. So anterior spinal artery is one in number. Two arteries from one form one trunk. It is derived from vertebral artery. It supplies a medulla anterior two third of the spinal cord. Spinal cord. It passes through the foramen magnum. Okay, anterior spinal artery. Now let us discuss about the posterior spinal artery. These are also derived from the vertebral artery. There are two in number. See, there are two in number. They also supply medulla. They supply posterior one third of the spinal cord. Whereas anterior spinal artery supplies anterior two third. Anterior two third is supplied by anterior spinal artery. Whereas posterior one third of spinal cord is supplied by posterior spinal artery. As you know, it passes through foramen magnum. It also supply medulla and cerebellum. Okay. Now another branch is posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay. We find after that it ascends upwards and forms basilar artery. We find medullary branches which supply the medulla. Anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Pontine branches which supply pons. And superior cerebellar artery. These are different branches. Okay, so what are the branches? Anterior spinal artery, posterior spinal artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, medullary branches, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, pontine branches, superior cerebellar artery, posterior cerebral artery. At different locations. Now let us discuss about blood supply of different parts. So medulla, it is supplied by branches of the vertebral artery. As it is present in medulla, vertebral artery is present in medulla. So this is medulla. We find vertebral artery just entering. So, it is a vertebral artery, anterior spinal artery, medial most part, posterior spinal artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery, and medullary branches from basilar artery. See, posterior inferior cerebellar artery is also present in medulla, anterior spinal artery, posterior spinal artery, and medullary branches. Basilar artery. What are the these arteries are already present in medulla, so they supply medulla. Next, pons. Pons is supplied by anterior inferior cerebellar artery. See, this is present in pons region, so it supplies anterior inferior cerebellar. It supplies pons, anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Pontine branches of basilar artery, as we see here. These are pontine branches of basilar artery. These also supply pons. Next, superior cerebellar artery. This is also present in pons. This is superior cerebellar artery. Next, labyrinthine artery. It supplies the inner ear. It is majorly formed from the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Then, when compared to basilar artery, eighty percent it forms from anterior inferior cerebellar artery. See, from here, labyrinthine artery eighty percent. It is derived. It supplies the inner ear. Next, posterior cerebral artery. It is a terminal branch of the basilar artery, as we know here. See. Basilar artery goes upwards and divides into two two branches, two terminal branches in the midbrain. These are posterior cerebral artery. Supplies the thalamus and visual cortex formed in midbrain. Lesions lead to midbrain syndrome. Obviously, as it is formed in midbrain, any lesions can cause midbrain syndromes. Next, blood supply of cerebellum. Superior cerebellar artery, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Cerebellar arteries. All the cerebellar arteries supply cerebellum. Between posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery, third and fourth cranial nerves passes. See, let us see here. This is posterior cerebral artery. This is superior cerebellar artery. Here, third and fourth cranial nerves passes. So what is the blood supply of cerebellum? Superior cerebellar artery, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This is the blood supply. And between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery, third and fourth cranial nerve passes. Okay. Now let us look at this diagram. See, these are two vertebral arteries. These are this is anterior spinal artery. 
this is anterior inferior cerebellar artery this is posterior inferior cerebellar cerebellar artery basilar artery this is basilar artery basilar artery giving two terminal branches this is posterior cerebral artery this is superior cerebellar artery what are the main components present in between these two third and fourth cranial nerves what are the what is the third cranial nerve oculomotor nerve fourth is trochlear nerve okay these are pontine branches thank you let us continue the lecture in the next part please do like subscribe and share